Welcome to the demonstration on how to upgrade VMware vCenter to version 5.5 when using VMware vCenter Heartbeat. Before the upgrade, we need to back up all the databases that are related to vCenter. We first back up our SSO database. Next, we'll back up our vCenter database. And at last, we back up the VUM database. In this demo, we're backing the databases to a local disk, but you should follow your corporate policy for backup if you have one. Now on our secondary Heartbeat server that runs vCenter, we go to the Program Data folder under VMware Virtual Center Server and copy the SSL folder to a network location. Note that when you upgrade vCenter with Heartbeat, you need to upgrade the secondary node first. So we click on the secondary node and click on the Make Active button. All the services will now be started on the secondary node. Once the services are running on the secondary node and we're replicating back the other direction, indicated by the green check mark, we need to shut down the Heartbeat service. Click on Shutdown, select both nodes, and select Do Not Stop Protected Applications. Next, we go to Services. And change the vCenter Heartbeat Service Startup to Manual to ensure that it does not restart during the upgrade. We also need to log into our primary node and set its vCenter Heartbeat Service Startup to Manual. Now we can go back to our secondary server. And because SSO 5.1 is installed locally with vCenter, we need to run the SSO Upgrade Util utility. Run SSO Upgrade Util space pre command. This is only required when upgrading SSO that is protected by vCenter Heartbeat. Now we mount the ISO image for vCenter 5.5 and initiate the auto run. Using the custom install, we install single sign on first. This warning is to make sure that our SSL certificate hasn't expired. If it has, the upgrade will fail. We verify that we have green check marks on the bottom two items. We choose that this is the first 5.5 SSO server and enter an administrator password for the SSO administrator account. The wizard will now go through and back up the configuration of the RSA database we backed up earlier and upgrade all the SSO components and then restore the 5.1 configuration into the new 5.5 architecture. Once that's finished, we move on to the rather straightforward web client upgrade. It is detected that we currently have a client installed and offers to upgrade it. We accept the license agreement, use the default ports, and enter the SSO administrator password that we set in the last step. Lastly, accept the SSL certificate and click on Install. We can see the client register with single sign-on. Once that is complete, click on Finish. Next, we upgrade the inventory service. We will upgrade the instance we already have. We select to keep our existing database. Make sure the fully qualified domain name is correct. Ensure you pick the inventory size appropriate for your environment. Enter the single sign-on administrator password, accept the SSL certificate, and then click Install. This will upgrade our inventory service, keeping the existing data that's in our current database. Click Finish. Next, we need to finish the SSO Upgrade Util by adding POST to the end of the command. Once that is completed, we can start the upgrade for vCenter Server. We'll do this by exploring the media. Go to vCenter Server and hold down Shift and right-click on VMware vCenter Server.exe and select Run as a different user. We're doing this because vCenter is set to use Windows authentication for the database, and this ensures that the services run in this user account. The installer detects the existing instance of vCenter to be upgraded. We'll click Next and accept the license agreement. Here we see our SQL DSN. Notice that the option to enter a username and password isn't available. This is because the DSN is set up using Windows authentication. This pop-up is a warning that we have VUM installed, 
and we need to upgrade that as well. Select Upgrade the Database and check the box to confirm we've taken a backup. Select Automatic for our host upgrades. Enter the password for our vCenter service account. Select the appropriate inventory size, enter the SSO administrator password, and accept the SSL certificate. Ensure the URL for the inventory service is correct, and then click Install. The database will be upgraded first, and then the rest of the vCenter components. Click Finish. Now we will upgrade the VUM. Like before, we run this as a different user, because we're using Windows Authentication for the VUM database. Click Next and accept the license agreement. We will not download patches at the moment. We enter a vCenter server administrator username and password and click Next. We select Upgrade the database and choose the shared vCenter Heartbeat IP address and click Finish. Here we choose to automatically shut down the services. Click Finish. Open the Services Snap In. and set the username and password on the VUM service to the service account and restart the service. Next, open the Configure Server Snap-in located under vCenter Heartbeat. Once up, go to the Machine tab, select Primary Server as our active server, and click Finish. In the Services Snap-in, start the Heartbeat service. Now restart the server. Now go back to the SQL Server and restore the backups we created earlier so that we can run the upgrade again on our primary server. Here we're restoring our vCenter database to the 5.1 state, along with our VUM database. We're not going to restore the RSA database because no upgrades were done on that database. On our primary vCenter server, we run the Configure Server Wizard for Heartbeat. We go to the Machine tab and set the primary server as the active server. Then we go into Services and start the Heartbeat service to bring the new settings into effect. We'll repeat the same upgrade process we did on the secondary node on our primary node. Once the primary server upgrade is complete, using the Services Snap-in, set the services for Heartbeat back to Automatic. Open the Manage Server Snap-in. While we wait for this to connect, we'll go back to our secondary node and set its vCenter Heartbeat service to Automatic and start that service as well and log off of this server. On the primary server, we'll see that it's started to bring up the applications. Once the applications have started, we'll go to the Applications tab and look at Tasks. Make sure that the Protected Service Discovery task has been run recently. If it is not, right-click the task and choose Run Now. Click on Services. We can see that the new 5.5 services are added, and we can also see that those services are running on the secondary server as well. Click on Start Replication and choose to not restart the protected applications. Click on Services again and the services on the secondary server will be stopped. Wait for the replication to finish performing the full system check against all of our new system files from the upgrade. In the meantime, open an internet browser and log into our web client. Enter an administrator username and password. While the client comes up, we go back and take a look at Heartbeat. We see that both sides are synchronized. We see green checks on both sides and zero millisecond recovery point. Now we go to the Application tab. Click on Plugins and then click on the vCenter plugin and click on Install. We need to remove this because of the vCenter upgrade. Now click on Install, following the path here, and install the latest version of vCenter plugin into Heartbeat.
Once that is done, click on Edit, enter a vCenter administrator's username and password, and also the SSO administrator's password, and click OK, and exit out of vCenter Heartbeat. We come back to our web client to make sure that our inventory is still visible and that the host agents are upgraded and are connected within vCenter. We can see that all of our inventory objects are connected. This concludes the demonstration on how to upgrade VMware vCenter to version 5.5 with vCenter Heartbeat. Thank you.